and in bold, and that's just competing. But this one's even more in a scale, I, I feel, that um, we may be different cultures, different languages, we may have disabilities or um, things that have looked like challenges to the world, um, or still coming together with the same dreams and um, goals. Um, we all go through struggles. And it was just amazing for me to see that even across different cultures, especially in South Africa, like when we would drive through villages where there's a lot of poverty and still seeing kids with disabilities there playing and wanting to compete and being supported by the communities. And just what God does through what seems like a challenge, um, but turning it into allowing you to see that, oh, they have a goal too, they have a dream. I don't know, that's something that stuck in my heart. Um, that instead of seeing people with differences, I saw people as people and having common experiences. And that's, that's something that I notice almost every day. Um, and one of the things that I think especially I noticed was that there are people who look at other people and see their challenges and look down on them but wonder what changes happen when you look at them with affection and looking at them with love, which is what I grew up with in the small community that I was in. Um, and it kind of restructured my way of treating others as having more affection and love and uh, inspiration as they inspired me and me just able to inspire them to go after their goals. And uh, so that was just a big part of like growing me the person I was in high school. Um, and then something happened in 2007. I actually ended up getting a sports injury from playing basketball that put me on bed rest for an entire year. It was my junior year. Uh, happened in February uh, after a basketball tournament. And that was the year, actually it was 2008, sorry. Um, and so I came home, I went back to the hospital almost every week because I just wasn't getting over this infection. And that summer uh, were the Beijing Paralympic trials. And so um, that had been a huge dream of mine was to go to the Paralympics someday. Um, and I watched my friends and teammates go to trials. And one of my friends actually she made the Beijing team, and she was younger than me, and I was, I was kind of torn. I was super excited for her, and yet at the same time, just wondering, you know, God, why did you bring this on this year? Like, um, it was just a really hard time for me. But um, through that year, being on bed rest, um, gave me a lot of time to read. And one thing I did was I read through the entire Bible um, for the first time. I read, I had daily devotions, but never really sat down and read straight through. And it was a most incredible experience for me. Um, it slowed down my life, and reading through the Old Testament really brought me understanding God's presence in the world um, and how the world has reacted to God's presence and the ups and downs that happen when you fall away from God and you start focusing on yourself and what you want to do. Israelites went through time and time again, and I saw that in my own life, how I had been um, blessed with such an opportunity to have uh, the sports program that I was a part of, and I felt as though God was showing me that, you know, I am still your God, I'm still with you, just keep your eyes on me, even when I bring you into this great new place of flowing milk and honey, you have to remember that I'm here, and that I brought you here, and so, um, it was a great experience for me in the struggle that I wasn't able to compete in the Paralympic trials, but yet that I saw that God um, was present and that through everything He was still with me and that He was still going to do great things as I had seen His faithfulness through that time of reading and reflection and devotions. Um, and one thing He especially showed me through that was um, seeing my body differently as. Um, something that needs to be maintained well, that I've been taking for granted. And um, so that 
brought me to the next area of my life, which was focusing more on uh, nutrition and sports nutrition, and has really strengthened me in a lot of ways. And so um, that was pretty excellent uh, revelation at that time. So then I graduated, and it had been my dream to go to the University of Illinois because of the phenomenal wheelchair sports program that we have here. I don't know if any of you know, but there is a wheelchair basketball and wheelchair track program here that is filled with um, different Paralympians and world champions and medalists and record holders. And it's just, as you grow up in the wheelchair um, sports life, you just hear about the person in life. And um, it was my dream to come here, but it was far too expensive being out of state. And um, I ended up going to a school in Montana. And people who had seen me growing up doing sports saw me go to Ireland, saw that they were like, oh, you're going to a tiny school in Montana? Like, this is the end. Like, we thought you had so much potential. And um, so as a sort of setback, even my coach, she, I remember when she called me in the winter, she was like, so are you sure? You're like, what's going on? Are you still wanting to be competitive or something? And all throughout this time, I had um, not had a team to train with there. But something kept me going to the gym every morning at 6. The football team would be in there. Um, I'd go and swim at the pool. And there's something that God just gave me this desire for exercise and wanting to um, be strong and enjoy that. And so I knew that it seemed like a challenge that I wasn't at the place that I thought would be a straight line for athletic success or something, but that he was growing me into learning how to become disciplined and um, to rely on the joy that he would give me, not on something that would be more set in stone, like you're on a sports team, like this is what you'll do, but I feel like he's growing me to really um, have a love and a joy for it that I think real athletes need to have. And so, although it seemed like a challenge, um, being in a tiny school in Montana, where I was the only person in a wheelchair, again, it's a school, campus of 1,400 people, um, but yet, he was continuing me on this goal path that he had shown me and strengthening me through all these challenges <coughs> um, and showing me again the presence of him and his reality and his faithfulness as he was to the Israelite, keeping your eyes on him through things that seem hard and that um, he's going to continue to um, put you in the place that he has for you. And so the joy of the Lord at that time, again, was my strength. So, um, one verse that came to my mind throughout this time was 1 Timothy 6, 21. It says, But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you are called when you made your God your confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession, I charge you to keep the command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable life, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever. Amen. And um, so that just came to my mind as I was looking over, you know, what would guide me? It was just living in righteousness and the God who is the ruler, rulers and the king of kings and just the joy that he brings us. Um, so now I was full of this joyous strength that came from God because I really was full of joy. And I do believe that that's what's given me strength in um, things that seem as challenges or that were actual competitions. Um, I had learned from experiences overseas, seeing people as people, understanding God's presence and faithfulness, um, a desire to radiate Him and to be filled by Him, and then the discipline and accountability to the Lord who is the righteous judge. And that um, next year, I got a call from the athletic coach here saying that they were able to offer me a full ride I wanted to come here for everything I could pay for, including my books and every single thing. And I absolutely couldn't believe it. Um, I started over that call. And so I quickly um, made, wrote a couple essays and applied to get into school. And I uh, was able to get into the dietetics program here, which was always also been my dream and goal. And this great school.
school for that. So um, I came over last fall, and one thing that we do on the wheelchair track team here that every new freshman does is we do the Chicago Marathon because we're locals. And so I started training for that. I've never done a marathon. The longest distance I've ever done was 12K. And um, I've loved distance, but I had no idea what was coming. Um, <laughs> and it turned out that I qualified for the Boston Marathon. And so I was like, oh, that's cool. Okay, I didn't really know what to expect. And then um, we got to Boston in April, and it was the most beautiful day. It was 80 degrees. Um, I pushed by myself. I'm used to that. A lot of, a lot of the strategy is getting into a good draft with people to so you can work together in a marathon especially. Um, and I'm just one of those people I had struggles getting into drafts, but just chug along on my own. <laughs> and um, throughout that marathon, I pushed myself to being in less than a minute of hitting a U.S. theater to um, be on the Paralympic team. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's kind of exciting. <laughs> and my coach saw that and he's like, I think that you should come to Grammy's Marathon with us, which is a marathon that's in Minnesota in June. I was like, all right. I was just like loving this whole marathon thing. And um, so in Minnesota, it was June 14, I um, went over with three other guys on my team and I pushed by myself that day as well. But uh, I was just thinking the whole time, you know, this is just the joy, like the joy of the Lord's night to train. And that's what I tell myself during a marathon, like it does get really hard and your arms want to give out. And I just tell myself like the joy of the Lord's night to train. He's just so joy giving, like I just look around me in nature, especially being outside. And um, I actually was able to qualify for the US Paralympic team that day, um, going to London as the number fifth spot at, for the women marathoners. And um, it was an incredible realization when I got announcing on that team. And I just saw, you know, a marathon seems to be a challenge obviously, and God took that challenge and struggle, and he gave me joy out of it, and his, showed me his presence in it, and it was just another building block of God's faithfulness in my life, and so then, this is probably what you guys are sort of most interested in, I got to London, and um, I was the only athlete who was just doing the marathon, and so the very last event it was Sunday morning, so we had already been there for two weeks, Everybody the night before had mostly competed and they were, they were celebrating and getting ready to be done. And um, I was just getting my numbers on the first set. And I was so excited to be racing. Um, it was a record heat day for London also. It was 84 degrees that day and sunny and um, it was actually really warm. And uh, that day was the hardest marathon I've ever done in my life. It was an eight mile loop course instead of like a 26 mile more steady flowing course which is what I've been used to. And so it turned out as a loop there was a lot of turns. There were like 64 some turns per lap which when you're in a wheelchair that equates to a lot of slowing down and accelerating around the turn again. And so it's kind of like 26 miles of accelerating and um, that just really took it out of me. And for the first time in my life I was almost a tear listening, oh my gosh, I really, I was reminding myself, people do actually die in marathons. <laughs> people are believing me alive today. <laughs> I never think of that. Um, and so then it came to me, you know, I was like, oh,
hardly ever gets to be raised. So it's her first time ever being overseas. And um, God just gave me the strength to finish in front of her, which was really big in my own heart. Um, to finish um, proving that God is good and that God is faithful and that he brought me there and he saw me through the end alive. <laughs> and um, it was just incredible. It showed me that the marathon as life wasn't just about the prize at the end. Um, it was about embracing God's faithfulness amidst the struggles and flying on his knees and by his strength and with his joy. And um, it's just guided me in my life daily when there's struggles, just knowing when you feel like you have no strength. You're out of water, you can't go back, and it's 84 degrees out, and you still might have 20 miles left. But that God, um, He fills you with strength, with His joy, um, and His faithfulness, as He does with the Israelites, back to the time of the New Testament, to now. So, thank you for listening. Um, and that's just a little bit about me. If you have any questions, I'd like to talk to you please feel free. But, thank you. Thank you, Suzanne, and for sharing um, your story uh, and this um, um, firm belief in a God who won't let go. Uh, we will continue singing Be the My Vision. This was the song that Suzanne asked us to sing today. Mm -hmm. 